This week, The Legend of Dragoon released on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 as a part of the PlayStation Plus Premium subscription service and is also being sold standalone for $9.99. Now, I know a lot of you were excited for this game and thousands of others were as well. This beloved classic has been ignored by Sony for so long and it wasn't even included on the PlayStation Mini console. So I decided to check out how this port of The Legend of Dragoon looks and runs on PlayStation 5 and man. This is a huge disappointment. Now, before I get started proper, I do want to acknowledge that I uploaded a version of this video yesterday and deleted it. I had some information wrong, and instead of just leaving it up and figuring it out in the comments, I wanted to get it right so you all had the correct information to make the most informed purchasing decision. I apologize for any confusion that may have come from that video as that wasn't my intent. Now, with all that said, let me share with you my experience of the game, and then I'll share others' experiences, which are really concerning. So the download size is surprisingly really small, under 7 gigabytes on PlayStation 5. Now, all things considered, it does look pretty crisp for a 20-year-old PS1 game. Now, don't go in expecting a Final Fantasy level remaster with redone character models. I mean, just look at how Dart looks. To me, it seems like they uploaded the PS1 Classics version that was available on PS3, PSP, and Vita, and just uploaded that and made it available for PS4 and PS5. So again, don't go expecting any new additions or quality of life updates. That said, they did add a few things just to make it a little bit more playable. So they did add a save states function so you can kind of save wherever you want with tons of different slots available. There is a rewind function where you can rewind, you know, up to, it says 120, I don't know if that's frames or seconds, I don't know what that means, but you can rewind up to a little bit of time. And then they also included some aspect ratio and filter options. So for filters, there's three different versions, default, retro, and modern. Now default and modern looked pretty much the same and to the naked eye, it seems like modern, the only really difference with that is it's a little bit darker with retro adding in those scan lines although it doesn't look as good it looks a little bit crushed and a little bit muddy so during my time playing i ended up just going with default and kind of the same thing with aspect ratio there were a variety of options but in the end i just kind of went with the base 4x3 aspect ratio as it was originally released on the playstation 1. now maybe ignorantly so i was kind of hoping for a performance bump considering this is being released on playstation 5 but there really isn't any at times it threatens to run at 60 frames per second moments like this opening scene with Rose looking at the big dragon, but for the most part, it just runs at 30 frames per second. Also, I was kind of expecting the load times to be a little bit faster, considering, again, it's a PlayStation 5, but it's pretty similar to the PlayStation 1 version. Both of these are kind of a shame, as I thought the PS5 could just brute force its way to better performance, considering how strong a machine it is compared to the PS1, but again, it doesn't do that. Now, the one cool thing that they did add and made available, if you're a trophy hunter like me, is a trophy set, including a platinum trophy. And after looking at the list, it seems pretty doable with the only real difficult one being collecting all the different Stardust. These are just items scattered throughout the world. So if you're concerned about that trophy, I would just open up a guide from the old game so you don't miss anything. Now let's get into the issues this version of the game has because they are aplenty. Now for me, I only encountered a few. The first one being this weird graphical glitch. I'm not sure if I ever actually got footage of it, but I did encounter it quite a few times. There were moments where parts of the environment would kind of light up this light blue color as it would fade in and out of environments or even just as you're walking around. I'm not sure what causes that, but it happened quite a bit. I also encountered quite a few audio glitches, the main one being characters yelling out their moves in combat. After doing combos in combat, they'll yell out their moves like harpoon or double slash or whatever. Sometimes they just wouldn't yell it out or sometimes it would just cut off mid-sentence. Take a listen. Not a huge deal, but noticeable and kind of odd nonetheless. Now let's get into the bigger issues that a lot of people are experiencing. Now, during my time just testing this out, I didn't get far enough in the game to experience this, but looking on threads and forums, a lot of people have been running into these issues. So for one, the rewind feature seems to lock the game or kind of soft lock it. Essentially, if you utilize it, it just infinitely loads and you can't move and you essentially have to restart the game. And the bigger one is with Dragoon abilities and magic spells. Anytime you transform into your Dragoon form or use magical abilities, it will either straight up crash the game or again soft lock it and just load infinitely. Now I can deal with some weird little graphical issues and some audio issues, but having the game crash when you use anything with Dragoons, I mean it's in the name of the game for crying out loud, it basically makes the game unplayable. As you get further into the game for anybody that's played this before, you really need those Dragoon transformations and you need to be able to use your magic abilities to defeat certain bosses, so if you can't have that, I mean you might as well just not play the game. To me this 
speaks to bad or no QA, and that's just unacceptable. If you're going to charge money for a game like this and it soft locks and makes the game unplayable, like don't release it, put it off. I understand you have this big push this month with PlayStation Plus and putting a lot of games on the service, but if one of them's that broken, just maybe hold off. Now, thankfully, it seems like someone at PlayStation internally is keeping track of this because there is a thread on PSN profiles right now where a lot of people are sharing their issues and someone's taking notes and passing it along to the team. This is really good to hear because a lot of times it seems like companies are tone deaf and we don't hear anything, but for them to be taking notes and having the team work on it is good to know. Now, if I were you, I would just wait until this gets patched. Unless you have the PS Plus premium subscription, then hey, go for it. You already have it. But certainly don't buy PlayStation Plus or upgrade your account or pay money to just buy the game outright because it's just totally unplayable and it's unacceptable. The only way companies like this really hear us is with our wallets. So if you have something to say, go to that PSN profiles thread, post your bugs there. But otherwise, maybe just hang tight and see if they can patch this thing. Now, if you want to hear about some JRPGs that do run well and that you will want to play, be sure to click into this playlist right here. And special thanks to Reset Switch, Tyler Kuzava, and the Miyazaki Man for supporting me over on Patreon. To get exclusive videos and other cool perks, consider supporting me over on patreon.com slash thegamingshelf. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.